Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, I'm out here on a cold winter morning to show you guys one of my favorite bug out knives. Now let me clarify what I'm talking about here. For the past couple decades, I have always had a survival kit or a bushcraft kit, uh, various ones from compact ones all the way up to full backpacks, but I have never had a bug out bag. So at the beginning of 2019, I actually started putting together a list of what I thought I would like to have for my personal needs in a bug out bag. And I began testing gear. So all throughout 2019, I have been testing various pieces of gear, equipment, food items, all kinds of things, backpacks, to see what I would put together in a bug out bag. And I'm probably about 80% there, guys. I, be honest with you, I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars of my own money. I have turned around and resold a lot of stuff. Uh, if I put two items head to head and one outperformed the other, I would often just go sell the other and take a little bit of a loss on it so I could reinvest and test more gear. Well, along the way, one of the things, of course, I tested was knives. If I were going to carry a specific sheath knife in a bug out kit, which one would I carry? So I would say somewhere between 30 and 40 knives have been tested throughout 2019 by me. Knives that I thought would be perfect for, again, my personal needs in a bug out kit. And what I'm here to show you guys today is the runner up. So I would, I would come out to the woods throughout this past year put two knives head to head, you know, set the loser aside, bring another one out against the winner. And I just kept working all throughout the year until I finally came down to the final two. So I have a runner up, which I absolutely love. And I have one that uh, is my choice, which you guys will see in a future video. So what do I consider a bug out knife before I jump into these? Okay, whenever I'm out here doing bushcraft and various tasks, <clears throat> I always have two knives with me. I will have some kind of a smaller sheath knife, uh, like this particular one here is a Hog uh, 4.5 from Tops. I might have this, I might have my Becker BK-16, my SCPR-4 is another one. I like all three a lot, so I kind of rotate them around. Along with that, I will also have some sort of a large chopping blade, like uh, my SC Hunglas, Becker BK-9. Uh, most recent favorite is the uh, Topps Armageddon, so I've been carrying it quite a bit. Now, for a bug out kit, because I might have to walk, I do have a bug out location, and that's what everybody should have is a bug out location. Because the purpose of your bug out bag is not to run around the woods indefinitely trying to live out of your backpack. That is a lone wolf pack, and it's really not a great idea. 90% of the people who think that they could just throw on a backpack and go live indefinitely in the wilderness, you know, aren't going to make it. But the idea of a bug out bag is to get you to your bug out location. So worst case scenario, I have to walk. It's going to take me two or three days to get there. I'm going to need fire and shelter along the way. Maybe a few other things, but for the most part, probably just fire and shelter. So the idea for me for a bug out knife is one that is somewhere between the small bushcraft knife and the large chopping blade like this tops. Something that will chop better than this and carve better than this. Something that's in the middle. It's kind of like it won't do you know and one particular task extremely well but it will do a good job on a wide variety of tasks. So what is my runner-up? My runner-up is the Becker BK-10. Now, just so you know, I have put this head-to-head -head against the BK-4, and in my opinion, it ran circles around the BK-4. The extra inch-and-a-half blade length, um, design of the blade and everything, just made the BK-4 not even come close. And surprisingly, I also put this head-to-head -head with the BK-7, and even though it was an inch and a half shorter, it actually out-chopped my BK-7. 
and feels a lot better in the hand, better balance. It just feels like a better all the way around knife. So the Becker BK-10 comes with handles that are kind of a, they're not, it's a different material than plastic, but it feels like cheap plastic. They're slippery in the hand and nobody really likes them. So you've got two options to upgrade the handles. First one, um, Becker K-Bar themselves makes aftermarket micarta handles. You can get them right on Amazon for, I think, around 40 bucks. They come in a very light color so that you can dye them however you would like. So this particular one is done with the micarta handles. I used a dark brown writ dye like you would use on clothing and, uh, you know, using hot water mixed with the dye. I let the handle soak for a half hour, then took a rag and just kept rubbing more of the dye directly in to get that nice color. So these are the aftermarket micarta handles for the Becker BK-10. By the way, five and a half inch blade, 316 inch thickness. Uh, it's got, for a short knife, it's got a very aggressive point I really like. And this little ramp here, the forward part of it, gives me a lot of control when I'm carving. Other handle option, the knife connection. They're on uh, the internet. Makes G10 handles in somewhere around 10 or so different color combinations from tiger stripe orange to, you know, solid black or green. This is earth camo right here, which I really like. Now the big difference when you use the knife connection handles, you see the difference here on the, uh, on the bolts. Using the micarta handles, you're using the factory hardware. You've got three um, Allen screws that go through. When you use the knife connection G10 handles, you get completely different hardware. It does away with the three uh, big Allen screws, and it's just got two small ones, but there's also two pins hidden inside holding the handle in place. In comparison, of course, the G10 is a little bit tougher than micarta. The nice palm swell that uh, the knife connection puts on it and the texture just makes it feel awesome in the hand. Uh, the sheath is just a simple nylon sheath. Uh, I'm not a really big fan, so I went to my local leather shop here in Prineville, Shasta Leather, and had them make me a pair of custom heavy duty leather sheaths on danglers so that they can just swing freely on my belt. All right, guys, with that being said, let's just go ahead and uh, show you guys some of the reasons that I like the Becker BK-10 so well, and it is my runner up for my choice for a bug out knife. It is extremely comfortable in the hand. It is lightweight, so you can move it fast. So it would make, with this aggressive point, very aggressive point, it makes a nice self-defense knife, which in a bug out situation is a real possibility. It's something that you want to consider that your knife may have to be used for self-defense. Because of the weight, you know, it's got a wide blade, 316 inch thickness, long handle you can choke up back here, it is a fantastic chopper, yet it's not big and unwieldy because it is only five and a half inches. And you can use this ramp up here. It is a pretty decent carver, even with that big wide blade. And the edge on it, <laughs> razor sharp, right from the factory. I never had to do anything to this, just instantly started taking the hair right off my hand. Okay, I got a bug out and hang on guys. It is freezing out here. I'm going to have to get some feeling back in my fingers or uh, I'm not going to have to be, or I'm going to have to be running back over to my fire. Okay, bug out situation. One of the things that I might need to do, as I said, defend myself. Awesome blade for that. I might need shelter. It's raining, it's snowing, I'm traveling. Of course, I have shelter in my uh, bug out kit, but for whatever reason, I need to get some tree boughs down, you know, build some uh, debris up underneath me to protect me from the cold of the ground. 
I want to have a big fire in front of my shelter so I'm not comfortable using a tarp or getting in a tent, so I want to use boughs. So I'm going to move this for a minute right out of the way so you guys can see. And there's a big blowdown right behind me, so I just cut the top off of the blowdown. I need to get some boughs, like I said, for shelter or for insulation from the ground. Well, five and a half inch blade usually wouldn't be that great of a chopper, but this one actually, as you'll see, works quite well for a shorter blade. And that quick and that easy, guys, I have got the beginning of a shelter or ground insulation. There's actually more than that <clears throat> right here. That quick and that easy. Couple more minutes working on that uh, big blowdown behind me, and I'd have all I need for a shelter. So, great knife for self defense 1095 Crovan steel. Holds an edge, sharpens in the field, very easy, which is something you would want if you were bugging out. You wouldn't want to have to fight with it or carry extra sharpening equipment. Okay. Another thing I might need if I'm having to bug out is I might need to get me a fire going. You know, if I'm having to bug out in weather like right now and I'm having to stay the night out here because I'm traveling on foot. I'm going to want to fire. So, nice big thick blade, heavy blade for batoning, you betcha. And long enough to where I can get some reach. There we go. And that's some really knotted up wood, by the way. There's got some big old knots right there that I just hacked right through. Nice little round right here. It's also got a couple knots in it, but should not be any problem for this BK-10. This is a great knife. Just like that. That quick and that easy, I've got firewood. And of course, I can bond, baton, keep batoning this down until I've got small pieces of kindling to get my fire going, which of course would be the idea. So, just keep on going until I got some small stuff. Just like that guys. Keep working it down again until I got some real small pieces of kindlin and uh, getting my fire going. Fire, shelter, self-defense. Easy, easy maintenance in the field. Awesome. Awesome little knife. All right. Down here on the ground somewhere, <laughs> I had a piece of fat wood laid out. There it is. Okay, what if I need some shavings? Well, will a knife this size make decent shavings? You guys can see the small curls that are coming off there. This is a piece of fat wood that I had uh, in my pocket. 
and all these fine little curls will make a pile really easily. Catch a spark with my ferro rod, baton this little piece of fatwood down into some uh, slivers to go on top of the cur little pile of curls I make, and I will have me a fire in no time. And finally, if for some reason I would need to carve with this knife, just to demonstrate, it does a fine job. Okay, let's go ahead. I could have could have picked a straighter piece of wood. In fact, you know what? Just to make it a little easier on what I'm doing here, let's just do that. See how quick and easy that chops to? Point the stick. Great knife. It is a great knife. You know, I almost, this almost was my winner. There was, uh, one that just outperformed this one a little bit and you guys will see that soon in an upcoming video as i continue working on uh, putting my bug out bag together which when it's all done guys i will unveil go through the whole thing with you guys and then do quite a few videos after that taking individual pieces of gear demonstrating to you how those pieces of gear work out in the field and why I chose them over other options. So I'm not just going to do a video where I lay out a bunch of gear and say, here, this is what I carry, and that is all you ever see. But you're going to get to see in future videos after that the gear tested. Anyway, point and a stick, quick and easy work, and making a notch. You know, if I needed to do... For some reason, on the way to my bug out location, some carving. Even though it's a big wide blade, using the thumb, the front part of the thumb, thumb ramp, it carves just fine. Quick and easy work. And as I said, if I'm traveling to a bug out location, carrying a backpack, um, obviously weight is going to be a serious consideration. So one of the reasons that I just want to have one sheath knife with me and not both a small bushcraft knife and a large chopper like I would use when I'm out here just hanging out, camping, doing bushcraft or whatever. So little bit different mentality but you know what it carves just fine no problem with carving no problem you know pointing the stick as you guys saw great for delimbing for making shelter great for batoning good for self-defense easy maintenance in the field it meant all of the requirements that I set out that uh, would make a good bug out knife. I mean, I'd give it like 9.9 .9 out of 10 stars only because the one that uh, you'll be seeing in a future video would be 10 out of 10 stars. It, in my mind, was the best out of everything that I had tested. So anyway, guys, Becker BK10, if you are looking for a bug out knife, a knife for your bug out kit that is rock solid, easy to maintain, does a wide variety of tasks, chops big stuff well, carves well, you know, is is rugged and you don't have to worry about it getting damaged in a bug out situation, I would highly recommend, highly recommend the Becker 
BK10. I thank every one of you guys who have been watching the Ochoco Bushcraft channel. As it is nearing 2020, um, the subscribers have been going up every month, and I would just say thank you to each and every one of you, you guys who have subscribed. Anyone who's watching this and hasn't, please hit the subscribe button. Guys, have a great new year. Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft.